Hi, my name's Dave Adams. Welcome to The Core Mechanic. And today we're looking at number 56 on Mike's list of 100 games you must absolutely, positively know how to play. Citadels. <laughs> Hi, my name's Dave Adams, and I love playing games. At the 2015 PAX convention, one of my favourite game designers, Mike Selinker, presented his list of top 100 games you must absolutely, positively know how to play. The 100th game on the list was a challenge to play a game of my own design. With a desire to understand more about the hobby that I love so much, I've taken on that challenge to design a game, but first I need to learn as much as I can about game design. I'm going to start by playing as many of the games on Mike's list as possible. Join me as I learn more about the core mechanic. Citadels is designed by Bruno Feduti, who's known for such games as Masquerade, Warehouse 51, Dragon's Gold, Queen's Necklace, and of course one of my personal favourites, Mission Red Planet. The game was originally published in 2000 in French by Multisim, and in that year it went on to be nominated for numerous awards, including the Spiel des Jahres. It was eventually picked up by Fantasy Flight Games and published in 2002 in English, where it continued to grow in success. The game plays between two to eight players, if you look at the box, and two to seven players, if you look at the rules, which I'm prone to believe the rules over the box on this one. In fact, I think most people agree that seven is about the cap for this game. It plays between 20 to 60 minutes, which really just shows the variation in time on the basis of the number of players, and it's just been a hugely successful game. Let's have a look at how to play it. There are eight standard character roles to draft from. Each character has a player order, a name, and an effect. Each player is dealt four district cards. Each district card has a cost that doubles as the victory points for scoring purposes. An effect, a district color, and a name. Players may not build two of the exact same card. The character cards will be shuffled, and depending on the number of players, some cards will be removed for the round. The remainder of the cards will be provided to the person with the king's token. They will begin the drafting process by selecting a card of their choice, keeping it hidden, and passing the rest on to their left. The player with the king marker declares each character in order of their rank. And as each number is declared, the character with the corresponding number turns their card over. Unless otherwise stated, the player may use the character's ability any time during their turn. In order, each player may do an action to take two coins or to draw two cards, selecting one, placing the other on the bottom of the deck. The player may then choose to build a district by paying the cost of the card indicated on the left-hand side. When a player has eight districts, it triggers the end of the game and each player may finish their turn before scoring. The player with the most gold pieces on their combined districts wins. With three simple steps, the game is incredibly easy to play and you can usually pick it up within the first 10 minutes. And by the end of round one, everyone's pretty on board with what they're doing. Without the character selection mechanic, the game on its own would be pretty dull. You either take money from the bank or you build a building, you build a eight buildings, you win the game. Not terribly exciting. Other civilization games tend to rely on which buildings you build and their abilities as being the point of interest, whereas here the point of interest is clearly on the character selections. The character roles are immensely important for balancing the game out, for creating chaos and disorder, and creating some sense of uncertainty about the game. Now while Mike Selinker says that Citadels is one of the first games you can use character selection, Bruno in the rules actually credits another person whose name I can't pronounce, so you'll see it here. And in this game, which apparently translates to Trader. Now I think Mike is right in crediting Bruno as being a genius behind the character selection. In fact, he uses it in a lot of his games. However, it's not just the fact that he's given roles to to, to different cards and said you, you can take on a roll for a turn. These characters are incredibly well balanced and some will help you with acquiring gold, others will help you with acquiring property, some will hold other players back in a bit of a take that action and destroy their property, some will actually take characters out of the equation entirely and if you're the unfortunate sucker that selected that character you miss a turn and others will just impact the turn play. That means that each character is effectively impacting 
every aspect of the game. Every mechanic, every action can be countered or impacted by a character in this game. And I think that creates for wonderful mystery in terms of what's going to happen this turn. It builds suspense and it adds to the quality of the game. And it does something else too. It stops any one strategy in the game from becoming dominant. Now, why is that important? Well, it means that you can't just make the same choice over and over again and expect that the same result will occur. For instance, if I wanted to be the first turn player and choose the character first every time, I'm going to have to continually choose the king. The problem is if everyone knows that I'm going to continually choose the king, someone's bound to start assassinating me with the, with the assassin, which ensures that I don't get a turn. Because you're selecting characters instead of players, it means there can't be king making or ganging up on any particular person. Now what this means is that each player must utilize a variety of strategies for ensuring victory. The character selection mechanic adds hidden information that adds to the uncertainty of the game. Even if you're the second player along, there's no guarantee that you're able to know which character the first player's gone with and to make, a, to make a, a choice of your character based on that, there's still some uncertainty. That's what I think keeps this game motivated. At no point do I, do I feel out of the game. I always feel like I'm in with a chance, with a fighting chance. And even if I'm just moseying along, choosing characters to try and mess with people, I'm still having fun. Now, I particularly like the game because it was one of my first purchases for my tabletop collection. And on top of that, it was so easy to learn, I really felt that I could teach it to others. And I did. I took it along to year five camp and I introduced it to kids and then casually introduced it to some parents after all the kids went to bed. It was there, as I tried to see, suss out if anyone wanted to play, that I met one of my best mates, Paul. And since then, since we started gaming together, it turns out he had a big tabletop collection as well. He's a big gamer. We've been great mates, and I particularly appreciate Citadels for bringing us together. I think time has proven it to be a sure and reliable go-to game. It's not only fun and engaging and entertaining, it creates this great balance of chaos and disorder mixed with uh, strategy and some sense of tactical know-how and keeps people thinking, keeps people interested. And every turn, people are always engaged in what each other's doing. Now, as a designer, I really love the idea of character selection. And it appeals to me, I think, partly because I love deck builders, I love recruiting characters, and I love using character abilities. And maybe that's just a flashback to my old Yu-Gi-Oh days, but it stuck with me. And it's something I really enjoyed in Citadels and in other games from Bruno, such as Mission Red Planet. One of my favorite parts is the character selection seeing how those abilities can make my turn unique, even though we're all trying to do the same thing and achieve the same goals. So in Citadels, the action and the state of play is really focused on that character selection because the rest is just standard, but the rest is not capable of being done effectively without these characters. So I think the character selection mechanic is a strong one. It's worth considering. It's certainly one I'm looking into and seeing how I can best use it. Well, thanks for watching. I'd love to hear from you. Perhaps you're a fan of this mechanic too, and there's a favorite game of yours that you like to see it implemented in. In which case, put it below. I'd love to hear about it. Until next time, I'm Dave Adams. You've been watching The Core Mechanic. Have a great week. Please join the discussion below and share with us what game best uses role selection. Thanks for watching.